man. We're live, brother. How you doing, man? Hey, it's it's Bijan days away um, from kicking a football off, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on the Longhorn Network. Uh, definitely excited, man. If you're not excited by now, you probably, once you finish this live show, and I say once you finish this live show with us, go ahead and, and go over there and type in Texas Longhorns hype video. Watch you a couple of those, man, and you'll be really excited. I, I was doing that for the last 10 minutes, getting hyped up about this show. Um, nice. It, it, if, if you really want to go see some stuff, go go type in Bijan Robinson, uh, you know, uh, highlights from last year, and then do the same thing with Xavier Worthy. Um, that, that'll definitely get your burnt orange blood boiling, ready to kick off, man. One thing I want to do tonight, man, somebody already did it here. Um, I see somebody's watching from Amarillo, Texas tonight. If you don't mind, go ahead and tell us where you're watching from. I think it's super exciting to us um, to kind of see where everybody's at. Um, but your thoughts, man, uh, after this Steve Sarkeesian press conference, which we're going to talk about, and then we'll kind of go through some media availability comments from some of the from some of the football players. Uh, but if you look in our thing, you'll see that it's titled Foundation. Um, actually, the title of the, the show is, is Young Guns. But if you look at the title tonight, it's called Foundation of Culture, which we really, really want to talk about. Yeah, dude, uh, fired up. Again, we knew that Steve Sarkeesian was going to have his press conference today at 11 o'clock. And then the player availability started floating out. First, you had Keandre Coburn. Then you had Moro Jomo. Uh, then they went to the offensive side and talked to B. John Robinson. They talked to Quinn Ewers. Uh, so just a lot of talk coming out of the 40 acres today. Again, we didn't know the players were going to be available. Uh, but once they were, tried to get as much information as we possibly could. Uh, but then it turned to depth chart talk. And that's kind of why I dropped. Uh, we're going to talk about foundation and culture because that's the message you're getting out of Texas is 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 the same thing, like complimentary, complimenting each other, understanding the expectations of the coach and staff in year two, understanding uh, what they need to do in their individual job to make the team better. Uh, your thoughts on no depth chart release? Steve Sarkeesian kind of prefaced it by saying everybody's going to play against uh, ULM, but then followed it up with you might not see one the rest of the year. Your thoughts? I think it's it, it's competition based. You know, it, I actually I was thinking about it for like the you know last few minutes before we got on here. The reason why you wouldn't have a depth chart, which is which is kind of weird if you look at it. You know, in a sense that every every coach drops their their depth chart. Um, they all look different. There's lots of and ors there's a lots of in, in some cases you know you've had coaches go out there and put mickey mouse is is their is their starting safety um so to me would you expect him to drop one absolutely we thought we may be talking about a depth chart you know tonight from what we thought our depth chart looked like compared to what their depth chart looks like but i almost look at it is is your your job is not safe until 30 seconds before the game and I think that's where he believes that the competition is so close at some of these position in these position battles that if you don't show up on Friday or if you're late to a to a to a uh, to a meeting or the list goes on and on, or if he feels like you're not going 100 percent go leading up to the week of, of the game, then then your your job is not solid. You know what I'm saying? And so I think it comes down to competition. Some of these battles being as close to what they are. Um, your, your thoughts, man, on this on, on really the depth chart. No, we've talked about pre practice repetitions. We've talked about the two scrimmages they had this fall. We talked about the spring game and how those were going to be his only true uh, analysis points to see how they played full go against you know somebody who else, somebody else who's trying to win a job. But it's different when it's another team. Um, so, like you said, rather than drop like TCU and Oklahoma did a depth chart full of thirty-five oars on there, I think. I think Oklahoma's running back, it may be running back, or maybe Arkansas had four running backs listed or, 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 or. So all four guys could be the starter, essentially. Um, and we've said this before it's not so much who runs out there the first play, because again, that's dictated by which alignment or set that the, the offense or defense is going to run against them. Uh, it's more who's playing in the third or fourth quarter is what I'm concerned about when it's crunch time and and when you know we didn't do as well last year we 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 planned well uh, we executed good for the first half and then and then kind of the wheels fell off in the second half uh, so it's more important to me who's playing in the third and fourth quarter and like you said against ULM there's a good chance that you're going to score the first couple of possessions that you had the football you got five you got eight uh, three five said today hey three if all else fails. You dump it down to me, and I'll make stuff happen. Uh, so those those athletes are still there uh, to to be able to make plays. 
but I, but I think you're going to get deep into the depth chart on, on Saturday because of the opponent you play. And like you said, that's going to – if there's a close position battle going into the Alabama game, let Saturday night, you know, figure that out. Let, let's see what how you play against a, another opponent underneath the lights of DKR in a night game with, with, with cameras and 101,000 people looking at you. Yeah, I can't steal this from – I actually seen this on Twitter earlier – and, you, and, and I'm not going to steal. I wish I could go back and, and look at it, see who put it out there. It's not like you're, you're, you're a freshman and, and you're wondering where you're going to start on the depth chart and you're sitting around, you know, waiting. You know what I'm saying? The same thing, junior varsity or varsity. Like 90% of these guys know that more than likely they're going to start. And you could probably name, you know, 90% of the guys that are more likely going to start. I think it's really just that 10%. I think it's start, Steve Sarkeesian coming out and saying, hey, your job is not safe until we get on the football field and we kick it off on Saturday. I, honestly, I really think that's what it comes down to. Um, do I think it's keeping anything from 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 the the, the teams we're playing? Uh, absolutely not. They know what guys we have. They, they're they going to see film other than really Louisiana, <laughs> you know, at least with Louisiana Moreau, they're going to see film. They, they're they not going to forget who B. John Robinson is because they don't see a depth chart. They're not going to forget who Xavier Worthy is because they don't see a depth chart. And, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, so uh, if you know who your two deep is, I promise you the other teams that you're going to be playing also know who's your know who your two deep is. Uh, there may be some sly stuff that comes out and says, "Hey, by the way, we didn't expect somebody put on here. We didn't expect Hall to come back." Then all of a sudden you see Hall <laughs> come out of the locker room game too. But uh, we'll see where the step chart thing goes. It, it may start off with week one, and then once he kind of determines that he has one week two, um, you know, then then he puts out week one, week two. I'm I'm not going to stress it. Uh, it's something we like to talk about on Mondays when we do get it, you know, to see if there's any changes based on previous weeks and so on and so forth or injuries happen. Um, so it'll be pretty much a speculation and guessing game for us as well. So, I, but I don't think it's a guessing game because when me and you did our depth chart, what we felt like uh, about a week ago, uh, I think we only had one differing position and that was the third receiver. I had Casey Kane and you had Tariq Milton. And then when we went to the defense, we pretty much had all had the same secondary, all the set of, same set of linebackers, Ford, Tucker Dorsey, and Overshown. Uh, minus minus the star position with Jade Barron and Jalon Gilbo, who's going to start there? I think we had all pretty much all that figured out. It was the defensive line. Is, is, is Byron Murphy going to start ahead of Keandre Coburn? Is Vernon Broughton going to start ahead of Moro Jomo? And, and who's going to play edge? That's that's the only question marks for me is in that front four. And I think that's what everybody wanted to see was was Murphy's name going to be uh, as the nose tackle on the defense. That's what everybody kind of wanted to see, I believe. And, and you're right about that. The media and shows like us probably want a depth chart to be able to comb through. But I think we have at least 95% of it already figured out, and most fans do too, exactly who's going to march out there the first play against uh, the Warhawks on Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Tell you, maybe it may just send all the twos out there. I don't know. I don't know what his plan is, man. Who knows? You're just going to see a lot of guys. Like you said, you're going to have a lot of guys on the depth chart. They're going to see a lot – should – see a lot of action on Saturday night. You know what I'm saying? It, it literally, that is the time to get get out there and get your twos, hell, maybe some threes going to kind of see where you're at, um, it, allowing those guys to, to get some real game action. Um, Can but, I ask for a couple, couple things yeah. real quick? I, yeah, I threw absolutely. the promotion up for the inner circle real quick before we start talking uh, – uh, player availability and, and Sark's press conference. I threw the promo. I guess YouTube has uh, given a 20% discount for the inner circle. It's now $3.99 for that initial month and then $4.99 going forward. Don't know if that has anything to do with us being a football channel at football season and, and them trying to get folks to join the inner circle, but we would love you to do that. Again, our first in-game chat is going to be Saturday at, starting at 5 o'clock. Uh, and then the second thing is we started a new series yesterday and – didn't get much feedback in the comment section. So if you'd like the Sadir uh, Mitchell uh, player profile that we did yesterday or, or or think that we could use some some change up to how we how we executed it, please let us know tonight in the comment section. If you have a chance to haven't had a chance to watch it, please check it out and provide your comments uh, to us because it's like I said, it's a it's a profile series that we're we're doing all the way up to signing day. And of course you'll get your Arch Manning film breakdown, your Jonte Cook, your Derek Williams closer to signing day. Uh, we kind of wanted to, to hit those certain positions where we felt Texas had more needs uh, initially and so the initial feels a big need. So that's why we covered him first. Uh, and thank you, Michael Spruill, for, for joining the inner circle. We really do appreciate that. Uh, but there's also 71 folks in here, 32 likes. 
Uh, please make that like number match the number of folks that are currently in here. We'd really appreciate it. And I'm going to stop promoting the channel and let get to, down to business. Yeah, so uh, really it comes down to, you know, obviously Steve Sarkeesian's press conference today is one of the things we want to talk about. Um, and then kind of get into really talking about foundation and culture. Uh, if you listen to Steve Sarkeesian today, it, it was almost like going to some kind of leadership development course and, and listen to a guy talk to you about how to build how to build a foundation, right? One brick at a time. And then kind of taking, you know, what he has a football team last year and saying, uh, he probably said adversity probably, uh, I would love to go back and count probably 15 to 20 times. Um, and I, I know you had something that you kind of told me, there was three words that you said earlier to me that I think kind of tells the, the whole story. Um, but from a culture standpoint, Steve Sarkeesian talking about, you know, we build a foundation, we need to be learn how to be resilient, um, adversity is one of the things we need to do. Us as coaching staff and football players need to play or will play, or it looks like they're playing as 11, you know, as, as a team versus 11 individuals. But making adjustments was one of the things. So really from a culture foundation standpoint, I'm drinking the burn orange Kool-Aid, like lots of it, right? Play on the field is something different than building a foundation. You can build a foundation, um, and in your second year, you should start seeing that. And I think Moro Jomo brought that up. But from a football standpoint, it's still proof in the pudding. But from a foundation culture standpoint, I think I'm drinking a lot of burnt orange Kool-Aid because your, your, your program is going in the right way with the right coach who knows how to talk to the media and who knows how to talk to the fans from a personal personable standpoint versus a, a, a talking down standpoint. It's the messaging, right? It's not me. It's not me. Every time these guys get in front of the camera, they're talking about their team mates and how this guy's progressed and that guy's progressed and then they'll ask them hey how have you gotten better you specifically about keandre coburn today hey how have you worked to get better and he listed off the things that he's been working on to, to provide a better you know teammate for, for the guys around him but what i told you was uh plan adjust and finish right so steve sarkeesian like culture, right? He said the one thing in media days that he could have taken back in his first season wasn't anything on the practice practice field it wasn't anything on game day it was promoting culture getting in here and, and providing culture and his vision for this football team and what it looks like and, and again he said it you know they were moving into new facilities they didn't have areas where they could meet and hang out uh, now that those facilities are there and they're available that's what was happening and not, not only just outside the locker room and, and on the practice field but but in their everyday lives they go eat lunch together they go eat dinner together I, I really feel like if, if if that kind of togetherness that that's being talked about off the field carries onto the field, playing for your brother, getting your assignment, your assignment only, and executing that, and not trying to do his job. If that kind of stuff comes to the playing field, uh, this like you, culture and foundation uh, takes it. I start drinking that burn orange club because I feel like in any job that we ever had you know we've been leaders in the army and we've had a group of of, of, of leaders who've worked for us and worked with us and that we work for and understanding their message is easier to do the longer you you, you hang with them your boss your your, your first down a job their expectations as they line them out to you we call it counseling in the military uh i'm sure it's an evaluation process in the civilian world hadn't been out there in a long time uh but your boss gives you his list of expectations expectations and you're like whoa whoa but as you work with them longer and as you work with your teammates longer those things become more understood uh, so i think that's exactly where we're at with this development model i think that's where we're at with this foundation that he's trying to build and again all this is is, is establishing that ut culture and so like you i couldn't be more fired up to see if that finds fruition on the football field it was plan adjust and finish and you guys know Clint, you could probably talk to that piece. Yeah, I, I think it's like you said. You know, it, it has to it has to show on the plan. You know, uh, again, you, you're listening to, and it, you could call it coach speak, you could call it uh, player speak, you could call it a whole bunch of other things, man. But when you when you have the same, you know, alignment. And I was telling Jeremy, you know, probably you know, 15 years ago, I, I had a, a, a leader. Um, and, and for those that watch the show, you know, know that we spent quite a time, quite a few, you know, we've been in. I retired from the army. Jeremy's currently in the army. And about 15 years ago, I ran across what, who I would consider my mentor still to this day, um, that 
when he talked, everybody regurgitated that information. And believe it or not, when you would talk to the same people that you were with in that same location 10 years later, they were selling the same thing to their, you know, uh, to their junior enlisted or their subordinates. And, and I think it was important because it, it's it's where, where Steve Sarkeesian is coming from is two successful programs, one at USC and one at Alabama, right? He's been with two successful coaches. So Sarkeesian knows what he needed to take from those programs to bring to the University of Texas to be successful. And it starts really with, you know, creating that that foundation and, and getting guys driven in the same way, going in the same, going in, you know, going in the same direction, um, having the same conversations and creating that loyalty and that brotherhood within that locker room, not just on the field, but outside of that field. Um, so, Kind of get off that now. Uh, you know, he thinks, you know, Steve Sarkeesian said he thinks the culture is an all-time high since he's been here. Um, that's what I hear. I think that's what we see. But it's, it's obviously got to show when you get between those white lines on Saturday. Um, next com comment from Steve Sarkeesian on Quinn Ewers and slowing down the game. He appears very comfortable. I can feel this confidence. You can almost see it on, on the decisiveness of his throws. You want to take this one, Jeremy? Yeah, and hopefully my mic issues are fixed. I think it's because I had something running in the background. Uh, is it, Can you hear it a little better? Yes, sir. All right, picture perfect. Because I like to, I like to keep up with stuff here at, at the real time, and if anything pops, give it to you guys. But I'll I'll turn that stuff off and concentrate on just on just this. So Quinn talked about this on I think it was Friday. How once he was named the starter, it instantly allowed him to take a deep breath, right? And it, and if you can relax in the pocket and not have to worry about every step you take and somebody looking over your shoulder to see if you're going to miss a, miss a throw. If you don't hit the right receiver, not the coach still isn't coaching him up, but, but the expectation and, and, and the, the pressure of competing for a starting job, when that goes away, it's just football. It, should, it allowed him to relax. It allowed him to, to, to gain that confidence that you're talking about. Hey, I'm the man, you know, coach said, I'm the man, I'm going to be the man. And, and, I, and Coach said it again today, he, he has a ton of weapons out there to rely on. Uh, if, if he trusts himself to get the ball to – the same thing we've been saying for a couple of weeks now. If he trusts himself to get the ball to guys like Xavier Worthy, Jordan Whittington, Jatavian Sanders, Bijan, when all else fails, dub it down to number five, make him let him miss, make the first guy miss, which he does about 80% of the time, and then go to work. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not surprised at all. We we know the arm talent, and somebody asked this today. When does – how long will it take for that arm talent to manifest itself on the football field and, and, and for us not to ask them to be a bus driver, a game manager? I don't care as long as they win football games. And and I don't think you'll be able to see that very because because Steve Sarkeesian's offense likes to take shots. He'll never truly look like a game manager. Uh, but, but the full playbook – will be expanded, I believe, by conference season. Again, they're going to do exactly what he said today. They're going to execute the plays that he does well. Those are going to be the first ones up in the game plan. And then if they find themselves up multiple touchdowns and they find a, an opportunity to throw one of those plays in there that he hasn't been executing well, ULM is the place to do it. Yeah, I, I, Steve Sarkeesian said it today. He feels that the offense is explosive. He feels like his defense is explosive. He feels like his his kicking game at this point, his return game and his punt game are explosive. We'll kind of see where we're at as far as the, the field goal kickers. I think he's still kind of unsure of what's going to happen there, but I think everybody's kind of unsure what a field goal kicker will do in front of 100,000 fans the first time he has to go out there and kick a 40-something yard field goal. Uh, to put points on the board. But he talked about explosion. explosion. You know what I'm saying? He says the quarterback is explosive. He says he is explosive. So, I again, I don't I – don't, uh, there's a playbook. They're going to – like you said, he's, he's learned 14, 15 installs over the last really, you know, 14, 15 practices. At this point, it's game week. You start narrowing that, that, that game plan down um, and allowing him to, to, to run what he's comfortable with and then start adding those things that he's not so no com so comfortable with. You start working on those uh, during the off weeks, but I, I don't I don't see I don't think you're gonna see a difference between the offense really in what you've seen last year versus this year and be able to put points on the board. You know, um, but it comes down to complementary football and your can your defense stop people from getting in the end zone while your offense is scoring? And if your defense is score is stopping people from getting in the end zone, can your offense score points when your defense is stopping the other offense? I think that's what it comes down to. But as far as explosive plays, uh, Steve Sarkeesian said it best. I think he feels really comfortable where his offense is and putting up a whole bunch of points. 
and, and we didn't say it like that. What we said was we felt like Quinn Ewers gives them the opportunity to to hit plays that Hudson Card may not have the arm talent to 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 execute. We should have used that. We should have said about a month ago that Quinn Ewers is going to be the starter because he has the capability to provide more explosive plays because that's the way the coach sees it. And then um, kind of lost my train of thought there for a second. When when you transition to – I'll come back to it, but I kind of lost my train of thought. But, yeah, he's definitely the most – oh, I got it. So turnovers. We talked about turnovers the other day when we went to, through our statistical analysis of 2021, and we said, hey – you know, we lost the turnover battle. We were five and seven. If we find a way, because we know this offense is explosive, and you're you can expect to have Xavier Worthy have multiple uh, fifty yard receptions this year. You can expect for uh, Bijan Robinson to bust multiple fifty yard plus runs this year, and you can expect for Jordan Whittington to be steady and, and possibly bust big plays because he's one of the fastest guys on the field. He hadn't been healthy, but now he's healthy. He has speed. Uh, talking about Brendan Thompson, talking about Savian Red. Talk, the explosiveness is there in every single athlete we have. If you could turn that over to the defensive side, like you're talking about, and, and, and get picks and get fumbles, and if you get a return, that's a bonus, right? <laughs> bonus six points on the board plus momentum, plus you get back on the field and, 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 and you're fired up and you keep rolling. Uh, but explosive plays, like you said, in the defense and Deshaun Jameson's returnability, Brendan Thompson back there now. Uh, I think I don't care how how you put points on the board, whether it's an 80 yard drive that takes 12 plays, or if it takes one play and it goes 85 yards. We saw this with Sock and Duncanville the other day. Busted a 99 yard run. Sock had all the momentum handed off to the uh, Duncanville running back. He goes all the way down the field. Game's totally changed, right? Duncanville goes on to win. Uh, I don't care how you get in the end zone, how you put up points, but but I, I think with that threat, again, you're never out of a game. In, in most cases. And, and so I'll take as many explosive plays as I can get on both sides of the football. All right. So Tracy Williams, okay. Uh, so he cooked Steven about not wearing Texas gear. Um, I'm going to use that same same energy with you two. I'm going to tell you, with as many shows that Jeremy has been doing right now, uh, Mr. Williams there, Tracy, uh, my wife will be highly agitated with the, the amount of laundry that I would have. Um, <laughs> dude, Jeremy's got me doing shows like – twice a day at this point. So I'm supposed to be slowing down because of school, but Jeremy continues to, to, to put more on me, man. I know I'm gonna get a tweet somewhere between about 12 and three every day asking me if I'm gonna do a show. So I'm already prepared for it. Love it to death, man. It's passionate, but somebody also brought up a point, right? Can the I, next off can week I protect is, myself? Can I yes, protect can. myself? The next off week is about two months from now. That's eight, the eight straight, off. eight straight weeks, eight straight yeah. weeks. And Clint, Clint could say he doesn't, he that I make him do shows, but that's not accurate. Not make, not make. I, that's not accurate. Sadir Mitchell took took three takes, two that I messed up. Tape shows are hard for us. It's easy to come on here and do a live show. Tape shows are hard for us. I have to get the intro right. I call them twenty twenty two class. I messed it all up. We had to do it two or three times, but it it takes no longer than thirty minutes. I, I try to let him get his study and done. I don't make him do anything he doesn't want to do. He just makes me more comfortable when I have him with me. That's it. That's it, man. It, it's passion project, man, too. It's it, it, I'm going to say it's not – it's not. It's easy for us to get on here and, and hang out with you guys for an hour. I'm going to tell you that now. And that hour goes by pretty fast. We're like 23 minutes and 53 seconds into that. Uh, <laughs> what I told Jeremy, too, is I can't do an hour and 40-minute show. That, that's for sure because I'm going straight from this. I'm going – Jeremy agrees with me on this, too. It's, that was him and Steven Nagati. That, was, that wasn't me pushing that show's link. And then it was, it was inviting uh, Nino in halfway through. Like, you don't invite somebody in and they just cut off the show. No. So, all right, next comment we're going to talk about is, man, it's game week. Game week, man, I'm I'm, I'm super, 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 super excited, man. Thursday, you got Purdue in, in, in Pitt State, Penn State, and then you got, I think, Florida State and somebody else playing this, this week as well, man, early. So, um, really, really excited. I'm trying to get all my homework out of the way now. I'd like to be the first person to turn that stuff in, man, so I can loosen this stuff up. And I'm actually leaving for, for Orlando, Florida on Thursday. So, be prepared. Our live show is probably going to be a, a, a lunchtime live show. I think that's what we've gone with. I think it's going to be at 12 o'clock, uh, maybe a lunchtime live um, on Thursday. That'll be our pregame show for ULM. And then I will actually uh, be in a hotel. So you're going to have to forgive me for my sound on, on Saturday at about probably one o'clock Eastern time. I'll be doing a postgame show with Jeremy uh, live from my hotel room there. So 
Um, super excited, man. We're trying to get in the flow of, of doing these shows regularly on the same day. So just be aware, Thursday, our Thursday show will be a lunchtime show. Yes, sir. Uh, let me see here. So talking about uh, – kind of talked about it already. Steve Sarkeesian on Texas defense today. We're flying to the ball. We're creating more turnovers. That's what we need to see, man. I, I'm telling you that, that explosion – the defense is kind of where I'm weary at this point. Offense, I sleep well at good. I sleep well at night. You know, it's really the defense. And, and I think it's because you didn't see consistency or explosion from that from that defense at all last year. It like like Steve Sarkeesian said, it was like you had individual, 11 individual players out there playing defense and they weren't playing together as a team. There was no communication. There was no buy-in. There was no, hey, I'm out here playing for you, guy next to me, not for me. Um, and it's more, I think it's turned into the we versus me mentality now. Um, so to me, that's what I'm honestly going to hone in on. Obviously Quinn years, you want to see Quinn years, you know, first game on Saturday and ULM's probably not going to tell you a lot about your defense, but, can t- but it can tell you a lot about your defense. It can tell you a lot about your defense. Cause you can literally with the talent you have on that, on, on that defense side of the ball, you can overwhelm ULM. And that's what I need to see the defense do on Saturday night in DKR at seven o'clock. And it's always been the defense, right? We, we haven't really talked about, you know, the offense uh, having to improve a whole lot. Again, when you put up the kind of numbers they did again, they weren't consistent enough. There were, there were lapses in games for four or five drives. And that's what Clint was talking about when he said complimentary football, four or five drives in the second half of the ball game uh, that went three and out that handed the ball right back to the other team. And then defense got worn out over time. And, and next thing you know, they were, they were taking tying you or taking the lead. Um, so it's always been the defense. And, and I agree with you wholeheartedly assignment sound football, right? With the athletes that you have, as long as your assignment sound, then you should be able to dominate a team like ULM. Um, but somebody asked Steve Sarkeesian today, and I wish I could credit who asked the question, but asked about the move to press man coverage and asked if the press, the move to press man coverage Jeff was Howell. to allow Je- Jeff Howe, <laughs> if the Sorry. move to, to press man coverage uh, was in order to get more pressure on the quarterback from the defensive line. If you end your tighter, quarterback has to hold the ball more time, a, a lot longer time, allows the defense to get there. And that's stuff we've been talking about for, for, for a month now. Is they the defensive coordinator's job is to coordinate the, the 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 front seven with the back end and put together a package to to do both things to either stop the run or, or put pressure on the quarterback and, and cause those uh, turnovers that we're talking about we need. Uh, so I loved his answer today. It's exactly what we've been saying. It's hey, it, it's a combination of both, right? They work together. If I got tight man coverage, it does allow the quarterback to to get off his drop and, and I could possibly you know get to him quicker. Uh, but at the same time, I still need to see gap penetrating defense. I need to see my my one and my three technique pushing that pocket again with that press man coverage. And I think you'll see a lot of that stuff. There'll be a lot of incomplete passes, balls hitting the ground, holding calls, and possibly interceptions. And again, if this back five gets gets their hand on interceptions, they're going to try to take it the other way. You're you're not giving up a free six seven yards on first down. I, I think that's yep. what it comes down yep. to is. Is even if you bail, even if you bail, use bail technique, right? You're in man press coverage and you decide to bail. Um, it, it still gives the quarterback a thought of you're playing man press coverage. So, what does he have to do? He has to hold the ball longer, even if you decide you want to bail, right? It's just a couple, one second or one and a half seconds in, in extra in the pocket. Um, that's what I want to see on Saturday night, as I want to see Watts go to work, you know, on, on, on his side of the field, you know, putting his hands on, on those wide receivers, man, pushing them out of bounds and, and doing those things. So, I think defense is what I'm looking for on Saturday night. Uh, but I also want to say this because Rhino 830 says the best, and Steve Sarkeesian actually said it. At practice, they knew the plays, so, of course, they're going to look good. Uh, when they get hit in the mouth, well, it'll actually let us know what they're made of. And and, and that's exactly what he says. Everybody, everybody's, you know, really, really good until, you know, uh, you get punched in the mouth, and then all of a sudden – um, you got two. You got really two things you can do, man. You can you can battle through adversity, or you can keep keep getting punched in the mouth. Go ahead, Jeremy. And that's exactly what we were talking about earlier when we were talking about the depth chart. Like this is the first opportunity that they're not going to know the plays. It's going to be man on man, mano a mano, and they're going to be fighting for those positions through ULM to set that depth chart, whether it's published or not, uh, for Alabama on the tenth. Uh, Competition is still open. Again, we feel like there's it's, it's eighty five to ninety percent set, uh, but you got guys coming back nursing injuries. The two guys on the uh, 
thumbnail tonight. Kelvin Banks, nursing an injury, recent injury. Cole Hudson, yeah, they're back at practice. Don't know what their contact status has been. We hear good things. I actually talked to Scott Hudson today. Uh, they're fired up for the football game. Uh, they're going to get to visit with him for 30 minutes on Friday, and then he, he said it's right into game prep. Like that's all they have with their son this weekend is 30 minutes on Friday, and then he's he's preparing for for ULM. So, uh, but I said that to say this that you're going to see DJ Campbell, you're going to see Andre Carey, you're going to see those oars. Not that they're going to start over them and against Alabama, but you're going to see that depth come through, and you're going to see those guys get snaps against other teams, which is going to, like as Rhino says, make them better. Make them better for it. All right. We got a prediction here that I think I need to throw out here. So I'm going to start with this uh -oh. one. Uh, very bold prediction. I will start four guys make all conference first team or second team at the end of the season. Um, then he, I think, then I think Tracy's kind of changed it up. So if you want to throw this prediction in here, me and Jeremy, give me Jeremy, me and Jeremy a couple of minutes to think about this question and we'll give you an answer. Um, then he came back and he says, I believe on the defensive side of the ball, we'll have four guys that will make either the first or second team. Uh, so we, when we're talking about, let's talk about defense. I think it's, e I, it's easier to get four guys uh, to make all conference on the first team or second team. Cause you can almost pencil in a couple of the guys there at the end of the season. So you really got to find two more. Um, so he's talking about four guys on the, on the defense side of the ball that could wind up being all conference first or second team. Uh, your thoughts, Jeremy, on that. DeMarvin Overshone, if I got to pick four, DeMarvin Overshone, Anthony Cook, Byron Murphy, Ryan Watts. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trade you out one. I'm going to go uh, Jalen Ford. I'm going to go Jalen Ford okay. is, is, is probably a all-conference. I'm not going to say first team. I'm going to say second team. Uh, DeMarvin Overshone, so that's two guys. It's your linebacker position. I'm going to go – Anthony Cook, I think it's his, at his true position. I think he's going to do really, really good things at that safety position. And I will probably go Byron Murphy as well. So uh, I think I'm replacing Watts with 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 Jalen Ford. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, sirens. Oh John my goodness. Is, baseball, you, must have, baseball must have stopped. <laughs> Did the Astros stop playing today? Is the season I over? Guess so. We I haven't guess seen so. him in months. Know, we ain't seen him in months. Since Welcome April? back, Johnny. <laughs> Good. We seen Johnny since April. Uh, so let's let's talk about all all conference. Let's talk about all conference offense, man. And, and I'll go first on this one. I'm going to say you're going to have. I'm going to go very bold here, very bold. And I think it's you have an opportunity to got have got. I think maybe four four guys on the offensive side of the ball that have an opportunity to make all conference. And I truly believe one of those is going to be a true freshman left tackle. And, and I think have an opportunity. What was it? Is the freshman, freshman uh, offensive player of the year or freshman of the year. Uh, yeah, if, Kelvin of the Bates, year. if Kelvin Bates stay, stays healthy, I, I think you'll see him. Uh, if not on the first team, you'll see him on the second team, all conference team offense on the line. Uh, obviously Xavier worthy, B. John Robinson. And at the end of the year, depending on, you know, what quarterback play looks like, which it's kind of up in the air in the Big 12. You know, Baylor's got a pretty good quarterback. You know, Spencer You know, Spencer Sanders coming back to Oklahoma State. Uh, you know, Martinez up at Kansas State. I'm going to say that Quinn Uris winds up in the second team or first team, all-conference all team at the end of the year. So there's my four on the offensive side of the ball. Dang. I didn't know we were going offense. I didn't – you didn't see my pen moving. Uh, dang. Uh – Sorry for the hesitancy here. Uh, X Worthy, B. John Robinson, Jatavian Sanders. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna say that Jay Witt has a good enough season. I think, I think you could ha have two thousand yard receivers at the end of the season. I talked about in the last show about you know committee, right? Committee of sacks, committee of receptions, uh, but. I, I feel like those are the four that I feel the most comfortable about. Uh, and, and that is bold left tackle. And, and I think a guy like Connor, I think a guy like Hayden Connor could, could, could compete. I think we, this, this conference is wide open, right? And we have so much new, right? Somebody said today, I don't remember if it's coat. I have it in, in the private chat, but, but what Ajomo said about, uh, 
Can you pull up his his quote real quick and read that? Yeah, sure can, man. Uh, let me go down to Oj- Ojibo here. Uh, we've completely re- uh, we've completely re- revolutionized this team in the in the two years that Sark has been here. He says Sark is a great coach. Yeah, fifty seven out of 80, 85 players are or or freshmen or sophomores. Like we understand who the guys that that played last year that are going to be back in. And, and, and competing and, and starting for this football team. Uh, a guy like Overshone, a guy like Robinson, a guy like Worthy. Uh, but there's a lot of unknowns, uh, guys that we're excited about because, again, we said that folks need to come in and push other guys for jobs, like competition needed to happen in the fall. Folks needed to get replaced. Uh, folks who, who weren't uh, falling into the culture and or not producing needed to, to probably get find on the themselves. Bus. At, yeah, as Bo Davis would say, get on the bus. Right. And so and so, like I said, Connor is a new guy on the offensive line that's really, really been um, productive over the last year. You got a guy like Jake Majors. Again, they were looking to replace him. I believe that Junior Ungula was going to take his job. And now that he's there. He has the experience. Uh, and I just like the way he talks. Not that he's going to be all conference, but I think I think he has a chance to be third or fourth team all conference. Maybe not, maybe not second team. Um, but I. I I guess I'll go with Worthy, Robinson, um, Whittington, and Sanders. I think the the list can keep going on, man. We could honestly name a whole bunch of people. You know, people are probably upset with me because I didn't say to Javion Sanders, but I think Javion Sanders has an opportunity to to you know find himself in in the talk for the Mackey Award at the end of the year. Um, so I'm not forgetting about Jay Jatavian Sanders. I, I just think you have a whole bunch of guys that could wind up. If you go down that first team, that second team, that third team, hell, that fourth team on the offensive side of the ball, you could have a whole bunch of people on there. Hell, you may have your whole damn 11 on there. If everything works itself out. Hell, I'd love to have all 22 guys on the uh, 11 guys on offense, 11 side, 11 guys on the defense be on the, the, the first team, second team, third team, all conference. That, that's where I want to, to be at. Uh, but we'll, we'll kind of see where it goes from there. But yeah, Javion Sanders is going to have a hell of a season, man. He's, I think he's going to be wind up being Quinn Year's scapegoat along with B. John Robinson when he finds himself in the trouble. He's going to be looking for big number zero there, try to get the ball to him to to check it down, man. But yeah, we'll, we'll kind of see where it goes. So H asked, where was the interview pushed out from the players today? Who did the interviews? Again, it was the media pool. Uh, once Coach Starkeesian finished his daily presser at 11. They made Quinn Ewers, B. John Robinson, uh, Keandre Coburn, and Moro Jomo available to the media. And any of the subscription sites will have the transcripts to to most of those kids' comments. Uh, That's where we drew them from. All right, talking about, um, you know, yours, you know, he obviously he spoke today as well, the second time since he's been named the starting quarterback at the University of Texas. You'll probably hear a lot from him. Uh, you know, he, he will have the ability to check plays, but not necessarily for all of for audible out of plays come, uh, come his Longhorn debut this weekend. Yeah. Obviously Sarkis is not going to throw him the keys to the car and say, Hey, go drive it. The entire thing. Here's, here's the key to Ferrari. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like Bijan has man, and say, Hey, j- just go drive it. And you figure out what you need to do on the, on the field. No, they're, they're talking about his, his job is to, they, cause they asked Sarkis today, you know, what, uh, does he remember his first game? Does he remember his first game? And he said, absolutely, I remember my first game because I, I got sacked a thousand times by Air Force. He said, yeah. I said, I don't forget, I, I will never forget that game. But he says, I was surrounded by a whole bunch of coaches, and I knew I needed to trust the coaches I had because they had previously coached Steve Young, Jim McMahon, uh, Todd Detmer, and the list went on and on and on, really telling everybody that I've, I've coached, you know, a whole bunch of quarterbacks that are either in the NFL or went to the NFL, talking about Steve Sarkeesian. So really – what he did is say, hey, you know what? I'm going to give you an opportunity to, to check out of a play, right? You know, check out of a play. If you think it's better to run the ball, then I'm going to let you run the ball. If, I, if you if you feel that the defense is giving you an option to throw it, then then throw the ball. But as far as, like, changing the entire play altogether, that's not going to happen for Quinn years, and that's probably not going to happen for some time. I'm assuming by the end of, you know, by the time, Mac, you know, Mac Jones being in, you know, uh, at Alabama for a while with Steve Sarkeesian, there was probably times where Mac Jones had the opportunity to go ahead and out, audible, audible play because he knew the entire playbook. And, and and everybody always talks about how Steve Sarkeesian's playbook is so vast, right? But every play, if you go back and watch his coach's clinic that me and Clint had a chance to to, to buy and watch last year, uh, the RPO game that he that he installs always has an out. It always has a check. Uh, to the run if it's if it's a if it's a base pass play 
And so, like you said, he's not going to be able to change the person, uh, the alignment of the personnel most times. But like you said, if it's a small, if it's a short box, he's probably going to hand the ball to B. John Robinson. Priest, if he sees a short box, Priest snap, he's probably going to hand the ball to B. John Robinson. If he sees a heavy box, then he's going to look for his opportunities to 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 find that first uh, receiver, whoever that primary target is, and then and then work his way through his progressions if it's not open. So, uh, they always talk about how ex- how expansive it is, but. It, it's very quarterback friendly in the fact that it always has plays off of the original call. And it, it, it worst comes to worst. Bichon said, just hand the ball off to him. Just, 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 just give it, it to it him, you know? And, yeah. and that's where you're at with Quinn years, man. Having the best running back in college football being behind you, you know, or the same backfield with you in the shotgun. And it's like, shit. Okay. I'm a little confused here, man. Uh, I probably just should hand it off to Bijan Robinson and let him do what he's going to do, you know, because hell, you may have eight guys in a box. But there's a good chance the first guy is going to miss B. John Robbins. He's going to leave four for a couple of yards versus putting yourself in a predicament where you're losing yards because you take a sack because you you don't know if the 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 uh you know the 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 pass blocking you know is correct you know so again if I'm Quinn yours which I'm not and I'm sitting in that backfield with him if I'm looking out that defense and I can't make a decision on what I want to do and I'm unsure altogether. I'm pretty sure I'm, – I'm, I'm pretty – I'm going to look at Bijan and say, hey, man, I'm just going to hand you the ball, okay, or or just run out that way and I'm going to toss it to you. you. You make the first my guy miss and take it to the house and make me look good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because he does. He he always makes the first guy miss. That's not – like, I, I don't remember exactly the PFF numbers, and we'll we'll bring the PFF numbers back probably next Monday after the game because Saturday post game uh, will be just what it is. We'll, we'll talk about what happened and get your guys' comments on what you thought. Uh, but then Monday, we'll probably Sunday. I'll spend the day watching my two fantasy football uh, league teams win or lose, and then at the same time, probably be pulling uh, PFF uh, as soon as that stuff is released on Sunday morning to try to get you guys grades uh, for each game as as they come out on Monday. Uh, but that's something I'm going to be, be be watching is is the offensive line's ability to to run block because again, if you can, if you can put a hat on a hat. And get Bijan to second level, he's going to make most guys miss. And the reason why I said that is because I remember his missed tackle percentage uh, was probably the highest in the NCAA. I mean, no, I know it was the highest in the Big 12 for sure, but I think it was one of the highest in the NCAA as far as one-on-one, not being able to bring him down, yards after contact, and then his missed tackle not posing. And for the defense to be a missed tackle, for, 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 the, for the running back, it's almost like a, a tackle avoided uh, stat, but he's pretty high up there. So, yeah, get him one-on-one with anybody, and he's probably going to win that matchup. Yeah, so hearing Bijan went from 210 to 222 is, is just awesome and scary. And they say it's gotten better, man, uh, which is, again, it's crazy because I was just watching some Bijan hype video a while ago. To think that this guy's gotten better, uh, you know, is it, unbelievable. I think a lot has to do with gaining that weight. It has to do with his, his ability to, to you know, have to learn how to pass block. You know, in order to be a complete back, not just at, at, at the college level, but at the NFL level, where he's probably going to go in the first round next year, he's got to be able to prove to teams that he can pass block. You know, some yep. of the bigger, bigger defensive linemen or linebackers that are being going to be coming after their their quarterback. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons, man. And he's got Char Choice that played in the NFL for, NFL for for you know for the Dallas Cowboys um, that's been there before. So somebody that could teach him about pass blocking it at that level and and to put 12 more pounds on that body that he had holy shit man he's because of his potential you never want to take him off the field because he can't block you know what i mean like you you want for five to be able to remain on the football field for as many plays as he possibly can without tapping his own helmet and asking out the ball game uh so if so and i and i don't think it was a true real detriment that we saw a lot of last year his inability to to block but yeah and if you've seen B. John Robinson's physique, like in the all access when he's messing with Quandre Diggs, like that, you there's no doubt in my mind that that 12 pounds is all muscle. None of that is, none of that's fat. That's all good weight. And, and it's just going to make him stronger too. Like, can you imagine how hard he was to tackle initially at 210? And then he packs on another 12 pounds of muscle and he hits the hole. Like he already, you know, has Billy Bowman having nightmares at this point. You know, just imagine how much stronger, and, and you know, he didn't lose any speed with it either. So it's probably increased his ability to to pass block it pass through. It's probably going to make him stronger on short yardage, you know, runs. And and then it, it's it's the speed is going to probably be maintained regardless of of how much weight he gained. As long so as I'm he keeps hitting, as long as he keeps hitting that X, Y, and Z on that PlayStation remote, we're good. Because <laughs> those 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 spins that he does, those not everybody has those does. moves. Yeah, that's that's. 
They're, they're dirty, man. They're dirty. Y'all hit that like button, man. There's 125 people in here. We are beat. We're talking about B. John Robinson, right? We're B. John Robinson uh, days away. Deshaun Jameson days away, five days. Um, if you if you just tuned in, uh, me and Jeremy will be doing our, our, our pregame show at noon on Thursday. Noon on Thursday. Cool. Uh, before I get on a flight to go to Orlando. So we'll be doing that at noon. And then uh, we'll be doing a post-game show probably about 10 to 15 minutes after the ULM game, um, uh, probably somewhere around midnight, somewhere, uh, doing a post-game show. So please tune into that. Should be fun. Uh, shouldn't be too crazy. I hope not. Um, shouldn't be too disastrous. It should be a really good time. Um, so really, really excited about the season. Like somebody said earlier, uh, there, there's the, – there is no uh, off week until the eighth week. I think that's when the bye hits. So, yes, sir. After Oklahoma State, I talked about that the other day, October 22nd, Oklahoma State. And then you get a bye going into Kansas State on November 5th. So, yeah, eight straight weeks of football starting on Saturday. But y'all hit yeah. the like button just because Johnny Munoz showed up for the first time. And, and, and April, April 318 is probably, he, he's, he's clowning on me right now. XYZ on a PlayStation. I think it's a triangle, a circle, a square. And if you have mistaken, I, I'm not much of a gamer, so y'all gonna have to excuse me. Uh, but I think I think it's like a square triangle, a circle, circle. And I'm not sure what the other. I think there's four of them. Hell, I don't know. So maybe an I X, think, Y, Z. I think one isn't. I think one is an X, though. Is it a, a, X? I, I, I X. have a PlayStation, but I generally don't fire it up until football season when I get the latest version of Madden, or uh, I like playing NBA with Luka Doncic uh, once basketball season starts, but. It's been a hot minute since I picked it up. Probably basketball season was when I stopped playing my PlayStation because I don't own the sports games, of course, because that's all I do is sport. Is sports, but uh, yeah, it's probably yeah. Luka Doncic, NBA Two K. Yeah, we're on it. We're on it. So it's an X, a triangle, a square, and a circle. Thanks, yeah. Abel. Appreciate you, man. Took uh, two of us. Took two of us to figure that one out. Uh, Johnny Munoz asking about playing a cornhole championship in 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 Orlando. Uh, nope, no cornhole championship. The wife has decided to to, to take us take a little vacation over the uh september september first weekend uh to uh disney world and the new college game is coming out you know next season uh hopefully we have a great year and we can find one of our guys on on the cover of that thing because when that thing was popping I, I i venture to say that i had every every year i had had the new uh ncaa college football game and it won't and once it starts coming back out, I'll definitely own that as well. And I'm sure Clint will, Clint will, Clint will find time to play that as well. I don't know, man, because then I have to buy the PlayStation to go with it. So um, I'm playing I'm playing NCAA 14 still on PS3. Hell, I think I'm with you, dude. I, honestly, I think 14, I'm going to have to go look after this, man, and I actually may have it for the next show, which what is your addition if I do pick it up. And, hey, I may actually go play, take an hour from studying off of this and go play four quarters there in a minute, man, just to, 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 to keep this going. Uh, but I think I'm currently at NCA 14 too, man. Um, shit, I started off with Tech Mobo in, in the in the what was the mid 90s, early 90s. Yes, was, sir. Was Tech Mobo drop all the way back <laughs> yeah. and then hit hit a 99 yarder. No touchdown, yeah. So if anybody on here that played Tech Mobo, let us know, man. That's that was a long time ago. That's where I started off at, though. Tech Mobo. They they want you to go see Cedric Baxter while you're in Florida. I don't think Clint is going to be there that long. I don't know what his plans are for that Friday night when he gets there. I'm, probably, I'm pretty sure she's already got a schedule, schedule, schedule of events that I can't get away from. So, uh, Keelan went up over 220, uh, wanted to make those those inside runs just as dangerous. Uh, what else we got here, man? Uh, they said that Bijan was eating hot dogs with his new mustard. That's how he gained those 12 pounds. Johnny yeah. Munoz said Mexican food got him there. <laughs> yeah, and Quinn, Quinn says he doesn't eat uh, mustard. Uh, so somebody put out there, there might be uh, trouble in the kingdom because, you know, Bijan's new mustard, but Quinn doesn't eat mustard. He only eats ketchup. So I thought that was pretty funny. No, it was good. It was good to hear again. The players are are, are being made available pretty readily. And I don't know if you're going to get four every Monday after 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 the game start. But it was really, really cool to to see. And I was telling Clint about this, you know, Sark does his presser and then four guys are there available to take questions. And like you said, the foundation and culture, uh, they were all talking foundation culture uh, again from for Moro Jomo to say that in his first media availability since those comments were made. 
uh, that they kind of kept him away from the media, questioning his teammates. Um, for him to come out and say the word revolutionized, uh, Sark has revolutionized this program. Again, he's turned over this roster, 57 guys uh, out of the 85 are, are, are new. Uh, that's that's what, I think that's where the, the excitement comes from. You know, you're already always, always excited, and, and Rod said this today, the closer you get to game day, the more Kool-Aid you drink. Uh, Cause you know you start seeing college football game being played. Your team's about to line up and get after it on Saturday. You start getting optimistic. You start hearing great things. Um, so plenty of burnt orange Kool Aid to be drank between now and Saturday. Uh, but then it's time to perform. Um, so and, and like I said, it's it's great for a guy like a Jomo who's been outspoken in a negative manner before to say, hey, this coach has come in and, and revolutionized this program, and I'm excited to be here, and I think we're going to be a lot better. So we're going to obviously talk about this on Thursday, talk about probably, you know, over under how many carries, how many yards Quinn is going to throw for against ULM. Uh, but I'll go ahead and answer this one now. I think Bijan gets over 18 carries. We have a problem. I think you get Bijan probably to that, that 15 mark, let him get dirty, get, let him get the rust off on him. And I think those 15 carries probably going to uh, have some throws as well within there. Uh, touch the ball less than, I think he touched the ball less than 18 times. Your thoughts, Jeremy? Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, probably early dose. Probably, probably that first drive is going to get the ball three to four times. I would say, you know, Sark's Sark's game plan is to to run first. So I'm sure he'll get three or four or five carries in that first possession. They'll probably go down and just put seven on the board. And then I think he's probably going to open it up that second series, let Quinn work a little bit, and then probably bring bring in Roshan for the third, like they normally do, two on one off. And then after that, if he probably comes back in for, for a series in the first half, if we touch the ball four times, it's going to be game dependent. And then bring him back out for the first drive of the second half and then give him the rest of the night off. If the game works out the way most people think it is, and, and Texas is a 38-and-a-half point favorite. 30, I think it dropped to 37-and-a-half, but 37-and-a-half point favorite against the Warhawks on Saturday. So hopefully that comes to fruition. It comes to fruition early, and you can – you could talk about the reason why there is no depth chart because everybody's going to play. Everybody's going to get snaps. Everybody's going to contribute. And, again, they're still going to be competing for for jobs uh, for Alabama week. All right, uh, Quinn, over 300 yards, three touchdowns. Absolutely. Quinn's going to play into probably, I would say, uh, halfway into the third quarter if everything works mid itself out the way it needs mid-third quarter. Um, so, I, yeah, I definitely got Quinn over 300 yards and definitely more than three touchdowns. He's going to have a big game on Saturday. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm excited to see what happens Thursday because normally we save this stuff for Thursday, but since Thursday's you know kind of getting moved up to noon, um, if you guys got questions of, of of you know what, show up for that Thursday show, please please find time to make it to that Thursday show because we don't want to give all the Thursday show away on a Monday night because uh, yeah. that's generally when we bring the score predictions and our projections for the game because we'd have a little time to study for ULM and figure out how we're gonna you know again it's last year's tape so what are you gonna take off last year's tape, but try to figure out how Texas is going to attack them on the offensive side of the ball. All right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with here. Let Keita Robin or, you know, Keita Robinson, Jonathan Brooks and, and blue um, get a lot of carries this weekend. I think that's currently where I'm at as well. It, you know, absolutely. Um, especially if not, you know, Roshan, Roshan Johnson, give him another week on, you know, if you have to it's probably hard to keep him out of the game. I think they said you're going to have to, somebody's going to have to, to, to hide his helmet to keep him out of the game. But if I'm, if, 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 I'm Roshan playing against ULM. Let your younger guys eat in this game. Let Bijan get dirty. You know, get a couple of hits on him from an opposing team. Let these young guys play. Rest yourself for that for that second week where we're definitely going to need you. Um, that's kind of where I'm, I'm at. I'm a, and that's where I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see, like you said, J Jaden Blue. I'm excited to see Jonathan Brooks. I'm excited to see the two freshman receivers, Brendan Thompson, Savian Red, uh, Terrence Brooks. Hearing a lot of good reports out of Terrence Brooks, and he's – a very young corner from up in Little Elm, just north of Dallas, uh, but his his father was a was a pro, Chet, and just excited to see a lot of these young Jalen Gilbo. Jalen Gilbo, in my mind, is one of those guys who's still fighting for a spot with Jade Barron. Um, I think Jaron Thompson and, and, and Anthony Crawford. Cook are good. I, I'm sorry, Keaton Crawford. No, yeah, I think, no, Jay I think Jaron Tom, I think, I think Jaron Thompson and Keaton Crawford because he, he start, Ke, start, I was going to talk about that earlier. Steve Sarkeesian actually brought up Keaton Crawford in his, in his, in his presser today. And I, yeah, think but I was Keaton talking Crawford, about Star. Okay, go ahead. Jay. I was talking Jade Barron versus Jade Barron versus Jalen Gilbo. 
mm-hmm. was was the position I was talking about. But yeah, if, if Keaton Crawford and Jaron Thompson are still fighting for position in that back end, um, that that again, those are two spots that we thought uh, were ninety five percent nailed down that may have brought themselves to to September third to be ironed out. But I think that that's who I'm looking to see is is those type of matchups is 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 Jade Barron versus uh, Jalen Gilbo internal. And then, like you said, Keaton Crawford and Jaron Thompson, the back end internal matchups to see who plays better and try to break it down after the game's over and see. I hope they get an equal number of snaps uh, to 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 kind of iron that thing out and make make Sarkeesian and Pete Kwiatkowski comfortable and mainly Terry Joseph and Blake Gideon about who they got going out there against Alabama in week yeah. two. Yeah, it's I, I just kind of listened to to when Steve, Steve. I think it's important. Steve Sarkeesian, you know, brings up these names, and I think it's important to kind of put them back because you didn't really hear much about Keaton Crawford, but then there was Jaron Thompson. I actually heard a lot about Keaton Crawford. Then you heard about Jaron Thompson and then you, and then bringing up Keaton Crawford today makes me think that it's one of those reasons he doesn't want to put up, want to put out a two deep is because you still have some positions that, that are highly competitive, that guys are showing up, you know, each and every day uh, through game week. And he wants to make sure that he's putting that guy that deserves to be out there on the field. All I give a shit about, and go back to this depth chart thing. I don't give a damn who they put on the field as long as it's the best 11 on the offensive side of the ball and the best 11 on the defense side of the ball. Honestly, it, it, all the, all the depth chart really doesn't matter at this point. Cause hell it could change from the time they put it out on Monday to the time they show up on Saturday. It, you, and then people start asking questions. Well, this guy was number one on the depth chart. What happened to him? Blah, 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 blah. So I think it opens up a whole bunch of questions. So back to the depth chart thing. Cause I think somebody asked us about it not too long ago. Um, to me, it, it's, it's about putting the best 11 on the offensive side of the ball and best 11 on the defensive side of the ball, regardless of who's on that damn depth chart and ors. Let me uh, answer Walt Walt's real quick because he's asking. Because I'm sorry, Jeremy. All right, you guys are doing a show during the game for insiders. So what it is, uh, Walt is for for ULM and all games other than Oklahoma and Alabama. Those will be live in game chat. So it'll be members only for the inner circle. It'll be made available starting at five o'clock and run through the end of the game, and then we'll we'll conclude that now. What it doesn't give you is we're not going to stream the game. Now, Now for, for Alabama and Oklahoma, what's going to happen is this TV behind me, I'll move my big butt out of the way, I'll lift it up. Uh, we'll watch the game together. I'll be in here, the mics will be on, the, 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 the cameras will be on, and basically a discussion during the Alabama and Oklahoma game. Uh, but for ULM and for all of the games, the plan is to open up a forum just like this, a chat. Uh, there'll be no cameras, no microphone. Uh, I'm not going to commit to that just yet. Now, now we'll see how it goes. See how many folks show up on on on, on Saturday night, and I may, you know, take the tape off the camera and turn the mic on, and and, and then yeah, we'll 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 kind of watch the game together. Uh, but it's just a basically a chat session with with us kind of updating the score. Hey, uh, second quarter, Texas up twenty eight seventeen, and this is what we're seeing. This is this is kind of what's what's happening, play by play type deal. Uh, but not with the cameras rolling. Now, for Alabama and Oklahoma, it's a different story. Cameras will be on. I'll be on the mic. Uh, and the game will be on in the background, and we'll just be, you know, conversating back and forth. But that's how that's how it's going to work. I hope yeah. I answered your question. That Alabama, that Alabama, um, Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma game will, will be pretty intense. Uh, probably on your side of, of the screen, talking about the guys that are will be joining us for that. And on, definitely on our side will be very intense. Uh, may have to take a time out at some particular point uh, during that, <laughs> maybe walk away from the chair a couple of times so I can, you know, have some vulgarities without, you know, YouTube taking us <laughs> off the air. Um, because that happens, man. That happens. If you are, you are as passionate as we are, um, you know, I'm, I've never thrown anything or broke anything, but uh, I can definitely scream some vulgarities and shit throughout a game <laughs> um, pretty bad. I, I promise. Oh. Oh, there's a chance. There, there's a solid chance that they're gonna they're gonna get a fist pump, or or I'm gonna throw this chair, not throw this chair, but back out of this chair and probably do some kind of happy dance uh, during OU and Alabama if things go well. And and there's probably gonna be a time where I'm gonna say, hey, y'all got to excuse me for a minute. I'm probably gonna walk outside, take my take myself for a walk, uh, probably for two minutes, and come back in and join you guys. But but yeah, uh, that's that's kind of what it is, though. We. This is a fan channel. We're fans. You guys are fans. And, and we're going to basically be watching the football game together. Uh, the reason why we don't open it up to everybody is because 
folks come in, they think it's a live game stream. They find out it's not, they get upset. And, and um, or we got other fan bases who come in and kind of, kind of mess it up. Uh, if things aren't going well, they just come in there just to, to, to talk crap and then leave. Uh, so that's why we're making it members only. Cause we just want to make it a smaller group, a more, more intimate group. And, and, and it kind of benefits everybody. You keep, kind of keep the riffraff out and, and can talk ball. And that's what we, we designed it to do. Yeah. There'll be a lot of WTFs, man. It's not just, just regular, just vulgarities, man. There'll be a whole lot of WF, WTFs, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So hey, we were said, at, said, if you guys don't cuss, I'll be disappointed. Hell, I don't have, hopefully we find ourselves in a situation where we don't have to. No, but it's, it's those, those games, those games, those games are, 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 are rough ones, man. Um, uh, they're they're very those are gonna be very high intense football games Alabama and in in Oklahoma so that's why we chose those games we'll see yeah, how somebody might have to call nine one one at some particular point I don't know <laughs> yeah I get head rushes jumping <laughs> up out of my chair positive and negative almost want to pass out sometimes uh, but it's it's all good you know that's what we live for again somebody said it today uh, I think it might have been Coach Sarkeesian we only get twelve opportunities all the preparation we do. You know, winter conditioning, spring ball, fall camp, all the gassers, all the reps, all, all comes down to 12 days, 12 regular season days uh, that we have to to put our work in for what we've done all year. And, you know, they're, they're fired up about it. So uh, so we kind of feel that same and not anxiety, but but excitement. Uh, about each and every one of those 12 Saturdays and what it might bring to us because we're we're invested. You guys are invested. We're invested on this team's success, and, and that's that's why you guys uh, are watching this channel right now. Yeah, you want to. You, you're really good at explaining this, Jeremy. This is kind of like I'm. You're good at doing this, and I'm good at the outros. Okay, so Ed, it's so I. You must be if you, if you're on a laptop or an iPad. It's pretty simple. You go to Texas football. Just search Texas football talk on YouTube. The join button, the blue uh, rectangle where you press join, will be available. Just hit that. Um, and then you're you're joined. Uh, if you're on a phone, if you reach out to any of the 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 social media platforms that we have, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, not really. Inst we don't monitor Instagram that much, but if you let me know, you're going to hit me up on Instagram. We'll be there too, or or, or Twitter, and then we'll simply just drop a link to the join site uh, to you. Just DM us. We'll accept it, and we'll 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 uh, give you the. Uh, the link and you just press the join button, but it's easier on a, on an iPad or, or a tablet or a laptop than it is on a phone. Um, but that's how it works. All right, man. Still there? Hey, I'm here, man. I'm here. I'm just listening to you. Uh, <laughs> okay. you know, I got people, you know, I think I'm going to join the I think I'm going to join, uh, think I'm going to become a member just for the game talks. Uh, it's going to be fun, man. Like I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, probably put the, like Jeremy said, probably put the TV up here and probably, uh, We'll probably um, cast from a from a different. I have another computer up over here. Probably do it at an angle so that obviously you can see the TV. The problem with live stream sometimes is that if if my TV is streaming, Jeremy's maybe ten seconds, fifteen seconds ahead of us. We'll kind of figure that out. Um, but it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really really fun. Um, you know, having us both on here. Jeremy's kind of talked me into it at this point. Um, he's really good at doing that. He's a really good salesman. Uh, no, nah, but we're doing it for y'all. We're doing it for the inner inner circle folks. You know, uh, I'm one of these guys that that love to watch football by myself, like by myself. Um, you know, I don't I don't need to go to the football games. I don't need to be standing, you know, with a crowd of 100,000 people. It's cool as, as cool as it is. I love watching um, the games by myself. So, um, but we're getting we're getting excited. We'll be back. Who knows, man? We may have some pop up show this week if it happens. You know. Uh, if something happens, we want to put out some information, uh, just so it, it's probably best to put your notifications on at this point, because Jeremy will come to me and he'll text me between 12 and three and say, Hey, by the way, you want to do another show. And then all of a sudden we're putting it on YouTube. So if you don't have the notifications on, please put the notifications on, at least tell you that we're coming on. I think at the three minute mark or five minute mark, however, how it works. Um, but you know, excited Thursday's pregame show was going to be at noon. Um, so if you don't catch it live. Uh, definitely go back and watch it later. Um, and then again, we will, I think chat will be open at five o'clock on, on, on Saturday. Um, I may be a little late to that. Um, probably shouldn't, but maybe a little late to that. I plan on getting back to the hotel right at about eight o'clock Eastern on, on Saturday. 
Um, but then I'll join in when I get there. And then uh, we'll do a post game probably 10 to 15 minutes after. Hell, maybe even sooner than that, maybe five minutes after the, the game is over. We're going probably straight into a, to a post game show. That's, uh, that's what it looks like. Yeah, man, it was a blast. And, and we didn't get through half of what we had put in the private chat. And that's because you dro- guys drove the conversation. I, it, it was it was phenomenal. Um, again, we could talk about quotes from players, but I think I think we hit every every mark that we wanted to hit. And it was enjoyable. And and I hope you guys got something out of it. We sure certainly sure did. Uh, and really appreciate your attendance. Please hit that like button on the way out. Uh, folks yeah, are saying that we really would appreciate that. Hit that like button. You have not subscribed to our channel. We got a big goal: six thousand subscribers uh, before goal. Oklahoma. That's huge. That's huge. I, I told Jeremy I'd be happy to get to forty five hundred to five thousand before Oklahoma, but it's doable, man. We 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 have a, a really good base that listen to us, man. We enjoy it. We're fans just like you. Um, but hey, uh, we'll let you go. We'll see you on Thursday at this point. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at Texas Football Talk, on Instagram at Texas Football Talk, and on Twitter at TX Football Talk. Thank you for listening as always, and y'all have a wonderful rest of your week. Hook them. Hook them.